I'm Ed Clark. I'm the president of the Wildlife Center of Virginia, one of the world's leading teaching and research hospitals for wildlife and conservation medicine. Like all of you, we are struggling to cope with the challenges being presented by the COVID-19 pandemic and the need to isolate from one another, the need to change our policies and practices, and the need to have our businesses open only to essential personnel. Now here at the Wildlife Center, we consider ourselves to be an essential service in that we're a trauma center, an emergency room, if you will, for wildlife in need of care. When an animal has been injured or orphaned, they don't have the luxury of waiting until it's safe or convenient to receive the care they need to save their lives. We have to be there for them. But while being there, we still need to protect our people, our volunteers, our staff, protect them from exposure to the public. Frankly, to protect the public from potential exposure to our staff and even protect each other from exposure to our colleagues and co-workers. But we've found a way and we are doing it. And we'd like to share with you some information, some instruction, some recommendations, and certainly we hope some encouragement. In this challenging time, it is possible for those of us in the wildlife care community, and indeed the animal com care community more broadly, to continue our work and to continue serving the animals that need our services so badly, but do so while keeping ourselves safe. Now behind me is the front door of the Wildlife Center, and I'd like to take you in and show you all the things we are doing, all the changes we've made, but I can't do that because that door is now closed for public admission to our building. In fact, our whole building is closed to visitation by the public. But the authorized personnel that go through that door are the ones who admit the patients, care for them, and those of us, including myself, the president of the organization, do our work away from here so that we are not at risk and so that we don't put others at risk. So that means for this short video, I'm going to have to call on my colleagues to explain what's going on. COVID-19 is the name used to describe the disease caused by a new coronavirus first identified in late 2019. The name itself is actually somewhat of an acronym, which stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. COVID-19 is caused by Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or coronavirus for short, and it spreads rapidly through a population and is highly contagious. This new coronavirus can cause symptoms such as cough, fever, and shortness of breath, and can even lead to more serious complications such as pneumonia and organ failure. It is spread mostly through direct contact and through respiratory secretions produced by coughing and sneezing, but the virus can also survive for an undetermined amount of time on surfaces, which can cause illness in people who may touch the contaminated surface before touching their eyes, face, and nose. This new coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, China, as cases of undiagnosed pneumonia in people were being reported in December of 2019. It was determined that the first person to be infected with this virus likely got sick from a wild or domestic animal. This animal to human transmission suggests that COVID-19 has zoonotic origins. A zoonotic disease is one that can affect both people and animals. One health is the concept that the health relationships between animals, humans, and the environment are intimately connected. Whatever happens to one has a direct impact on the other two parts. Zoonotic diseases certainly fall under this One Health umbrella. In fact, this new coronavirus is an extraordinary example of the One Health concept. During this outbreak, we're reminded of the implications of globalization. Just because something is happening on the other side of the world does not mean it will not directly impact you or me. Scientists and doctors are looking at the history of other coronaviruses, such as SARS and MERS, in order to try to fill in the gaps or the unknowns about this particular virus. Similarly, scientists are using animals in order to try to quickly develop therapeutics, such as vaccines, in order to help decrease the disease severity in people. This outbreak has proven what a devastating impact something like this can have on our economy. 
employees have lost their jobs, businesses have closed, interstate and international travel are nearly non-existent, and those are just a few examples. Lastly, this coronavirus outbreak has already taken a great toll on mental health. From mourning the loss of a loved one who succumbed to this disease, to the fear of losing a job, the mental health implications of this are incredible. Even the inability to visit family and friends, having to cancel wedding ceremonies and graduations, and just the overall uncertainty of the future can cause feelings of hopelessness and isolation. In just a few months, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic and demanded the attention of every doctor, politician, world leader, teacher, parent, business owner, individual in the world. Now, more than ever, we must work together as a team, not only with our coworkers, but also with our neighbors, friends, family, spouses, etc., in order to take care of each other. And, like all large-scale issues, the first place to look in order to enact change is in the mirror. We must be responsible for our own actions and realize that anything we do can or will have a direct impact on others. We need to look around our workplaces, our homes, and our communities and come up with ways to continue doing what's important, to continue caring for each other, all while listening to science and reason. The primary goal under these circumstances is to do everything we can to maintain the safety of our staff and on-site volunteers, both so that they can remain healthy as individuals, but also that we can continue to provide care for the ambassador animals and patients who are here and still being admitted daily. As we make adaptations to our protocol and consider decisions in response to this crisis, it is essential that we are continually referencing science-based resources for guidance. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and World Health Organization are providing the most update information and our actions should be taken in response to those recommendations. One important way that we can do our part to help human hospitals during this time is to limit our use of PPE, such as disposable masks and gloves. Only use these resources when necessary and keep a reasonable stock or inventory based on how much you actually need to use. Be creative and find alternate solutions such as using clothed masks for procedures. As an organization, providing a service that is essential both for the public and for our wild neighbors, we have a responsibility to take all available precautions to limit the spread of illness to and among our staff. Any circumstances where staff, volunteers, and members of the public may interact with one another need to be reconsidered. The Wildlife Center of Virginia, along with many other facilities, has set up a station for non-contact patient drop-off and has reconsidered when and how we can best utilize our staff and volunteers during this time, while keeping everybody as safe as possible. If you have a rehabilitation facility where you have a staff or volunteers, remember to sanitize door handles, light switches, and other shared surfaces regularly. Practice social distancing between staff members whenever possible. Install signs at hand washing stations, clarifying appropriate hand washing techniques, and remember to increase the number of hand sanitizer stations available. Ensure on-site staff is conscious of other CDC recommendations to prevent the spread of disease. As a relatively large center, the Wildlife Center of Virginia has taken further steps to limit our staff's chances of exposure and to ensure the Wildlife Center is able to continue its operation for caring for wild patients every day. The center's on-site staff has been divided into two teams. These two teams were made with consideration to who interacts inside and outside of work so that there will be no direct interaction between any two members of the two teams going forward. With this system in place, if a member of one team become ill, causing the team to be quarantined, for example, an entire function and staff is still able to care for patients. Of course, as a result of this change, the pressure on our staff has increased. During this time, everyone's stress is high and it is especially important to be considerate of our own and each other's mental health. With many staff members working from home, we must creatively tackle the challenge of staying in touch electronically. We have a collection of resources associated with this class for you. To help determine some of our solutions may work well for your facility, check these resources.
Public outreach and communications are important facets of our work as wildlife rehabilitators under normal circumstances. Having a good communications plan enables us to educate people about wildlife and wildlife issues. It allows us to promote positive attitudes toward wildlife, and it allows us to engage with our donors and supporters all around the world. During this pandemic, as more and more restrictions and recommendations are put in place for us to stay physically distanced from one another and to shelter in place, having a good communications plan is critical. People are feeling anxious and isolated. They're feeling unsure about the future. With so many schools closed for the immediate future, teachers and students are having to scramble to figure out what this new style of education looks like. And people in general are just looking to feel connected to one another. Your supporters are no doubt wondering how you're doing and what they can do to help you in these times as well. Getting creative and utilizing technology to connect with people online can help your organization through this uncertain time. In many ways, it can even expand our community of supporters in new and engaging ways. Virtual programs and tours can be both educational and engaging and can be excellent ways to reach a wide variety of people around the world. One of the easiest things available to any of us for free are Facebook Live videos. Show your education animals, conduct a program, lead a tour, or have a question and answer session with a staff member. You may also want to consider utilizing video and chat room platforms to interact with your supporters. Having a chat room or forum style interface can be excellent ways to keep in touch, answer questions, and provide educational lessons. Don't be afraid to try something out and ask your supporters for feedback. They'll certainly let you know what they find useful and fun and entertaining in these times. When you do figure out what works for you, reach out to the media to spread the word. They're looking for stories particularly more uplifting opportunities to share in this current situation. And don't forget about your internal communications as well. Whether you're a staff member at a part of a larger rehabilitation center or a volunteer staff at a smaller home-based operation, staying connected and in touch with one another will greatly help the work that you're doing. Not just to communicate about patient care, but to just check in with each other and make sure you're doing okay in these more isolating times. Utilize technology, Zoom meetings, online chat rooms, video chats, and social media applications, they can all be useful in keeping us connected and feeling less isolated during these difficult times. Our communication strategies and skills can make a big impact and can make a big difference in our work. Many of us are feeling anxious and unsure about what the future holds right now, but by connecting with people in whatever ways we can, can really make a huge difference. Well, that's it. We hope this short video has been helpful and instructive. We want you to understand the challenge before us that is presented by the COVID-19 virus. We want you to understand that it is indeed a very serious challenge, but it is a challenge we can meet by simply doing the basic things that are necessary to keep everyone safe. Following the protocols of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the World Health Organization. Make sure your people don't have unnecessary contact with surfaces or other people that could expose them to the virus. And make sure that you sanitize all surfaces that multiple people make contact. It's just that simple, but it takes dedication, it takes vigilance, and it takes an absolute dedication to the routine of prevention. Now, we are doing our best. We don't know how it's going to turn out and we're all still waiting for the end of this difficult time. But in the meantime, we hope you will stay safe, stay sanitized, wash your hands, and take care of those animals.